Once again, while we ran big mileages, we never got injured. Not once did I ever have an Achilles tendon problem, problem with my athletes or a hamstring. Problem. Never once, uh, because we did a lot of hill training and uh, we did big, big mileage. So don't let anyone ever fool you that big mileage is going to cause you trouble. Where you're going to get the trouble will be an imbalance of shoes. If you have shoes that are unbalanced, you're going to be pronating and supinating. And don't let anyone ever tell you, even the podiatrist for that matter, tell you in every case that you are uh, you pronate or supinate. Remember something. You can get, it's the shoe that needs the orthotic in most cases, not you. Well, I was the national coach at Finman, and uh, I went up to Finman, and uh, they were wearing Adidas and Puma in those days, and the Adidas shoe was a very different shoe than what today what to what it was then. And uh, I think an Adidas is a good balanced shoe. And I, once again, I don't have any problem, I don't have any time for the Adidas. But uh, once the Finns were doing about 30 miles a week in conditioning on the snow and ice, and I'd never been in snow and ice before, and uh, uh, I started to pump the miles up, and instead of doing 30 miles a week, they're doing 130 miles a week, and all the top runners of Finland were breaking down. So I went to the Kahoo people, and we, I got the last mate that I wanted with a wide base, and they told me that soft rubber would rip, rip a bit on ice, so we made a shoe with a very, very soft rubber underneath, and uh, then I could get the athletes out and do another big mileage, and because uh, Beerin and Vassar and all these guys trained in those type of shoes in the wintertime, uh, Beerin actually raced in, in Tiger later on, but the point is, we could do, now do the miles we couldn't do before, because now we had a balance shoe that's against the, the imbalance shoe. Uh, so it's very important to understand this. And, uh, you know, in, in actual fact, we, we, we talk about it, a horse's, a horse's hoof is just the same. It, you know, they're, they're no different shape. A horse's hoof is a horse's hoof. They might be bigger, uh, it's smaller, but it's the same because it's made to take your, take your weight, right? Now, human beings put just the same. It's made to take your weight. You, you, you make uh, contact with the ground here and on your heel, that's where you take the weight. Unless you get it, and if you have a low arch, you'll you actually touch, touch down the side. So if, if you step your, your wet foot on the, on, the, on the dry floor and step back, it's banana shaped. But underneath it's banana shaped. You can't tell by looking at it, well, that's sole. I could take that sole, I could trim it this way, trim it that way. You can't, people look at it and say, well, that's straight or, or, or curved. They can't tell. It's the last, it's the way you make the last underneath it's, it's made. And see, we make our last like a foot. And when I win, you, there's no insoles, uh, no flat insoles, and you don't have to put any. Uh, moldings in or anything like that. The last is made that way, and it's like a it's like slip last at the back. It comes under, and, and it's like a, an egg sitting in your neck. You know, like a, and I have a nice soft back on my shoe. For you. But fundamentally, your foot is the same, even if you have a high arch or a low arch. And of course, these people that uh, you go to the diet and you'll say you've got a high arch, you're weak in the arch, you've got a, you need orthotic, they're supported, or you've got a, you're flat footed, and so you now you need support. Now, if we, if we were meant to have a support in the arch of our foot, we'd have a foot like a cow in the first place. It was never supposed to be supported. And if your arch is so weak that it needs support, when you get to my arch, you're not, you're not going to be able to walk. The damn is going to get weaker and weaker. So what do you do? You, you, the logical thing is, if you have a weak muscles or weak areas, you've got to strengthen. So what you've got to do is, is get on the edge of the step and go up and down like this, you know, and get your ankles nice and stretched, or get a, a motor tube or a piece of rope around a four part of your foot, hold it and pull against it like that, and keep working on it. You're going to get strong arches. You're not going to need support. Let's, let's face it. If you've got the right shoes and you have balanced shoes, you can go on to do big miles. You're not going to have any problems. Because we've done it. And we did, as I say, we used to do our speed work at night, dodging cars in the, in the rain. Uh, that's how we did our speed work here at the Olympics. You know, we're all different. One bow leg and someone else is not me and someone else throws their foot out. Uh, anyone can see that. But the point is, our, as we grow, our body compensates and we get strengthened this way. And you go and play, but you take the American, you, you play softball, and that knocks your feet around, sprinting and tearing around, sliding. They play softball, they play tennis, they play gridiron, they play basketball. They never need orthotic. All of a sudden they start running their need orthotics. Your common sense tells you there has to be something wrong with the shoes, not you. And, uh, you know, Dirk Estella, have you ever seen Dirk Estella? When you see Dirk Estella run, and you're sure to see him run, running sometime, uh, watch his, his right foot splays out, not his left foot. That foot is straight. His right foot splays out, and when his foot comes down, the shoe twists right underneath his foot. You, you, you want to hide your eyes. You know, look at it. His, his shoe goes right under his foot like that. Look at, look at he can do. Anyway, so much for that.